human beings need power. We need sustainable green power. We have to do a project, but we also have to work with the environment in order to make sure the asset is protected. Nature is quite a powerful way of protecting all of us, whether it's humans, other species, or actual physical assets. Zephyr is going to be one of the shining lights of ecosystem restoration for Pakistan. There's a significant amount of population in Pakistan that does not have access to stable and consistent electrical energy. Being a country that is an importing country for fossil fuels, for our power generation, but also not having stable access to fossil fuels can result in unstable generation. The lack of electricity has a significant impact on livelihood. It has an impact on education, it has an impact on health, it has an impact on wealth generation. So the basic social obligation should be met and stability is required for us to progress individually and as a country. In Pakistan, we're blessed with phenomenal sunlight, good wind, good hydro. Renewable energy is a free resource that we have available to us and we should take advantage of it. Zephyr Power is a 50 megawatt wind power project that is a significant amount of electricity and a notable contribution to the grid. Construction began in 2017. We came online in 2019. We're using the Siemens Gamesa turbine. It's a 2.0 turbine with a wind diameter of 114 meters. It is the first project using this technology in Pakistan. Zephyr Power represents the new technology at the time for power generation. Zephyr is in the Indus Delta. We have to remain very conscious of the environment and the site, given that we are always exposed to tidal water flows. We have daily flooding on site, and as you know, you can't stop the water. So the thinking was done very early on, even before the first stone was put down, at Zephyr of how do we work with the environment. Civil infrastructure in particular can be damaged and that can cause issues with regards to maintenance of the assets. We were approached by Zephyr about investing in the wind farm and through the due diligence process we identified that it was built in part of the delta where a lot of the natural protection that the mangroves that had previously been there had been removed so we identified some opportunities to actually increase the resiliency of that investment through a nature-based solution we have done a significant amount of work to protect the existing mangroves to revitalize mangroves which has been disturbed because of camels or because of disruptions due to fishing, crabbing and shrimping. And then also putting policies in place to protect the newly planted mangrove. It translates into protecting the asset because mangroves also protect the soil and solidify the civil infrastructure of the site. We estimate that around $1 million of maintenance costs would have been saved over the lifetime of the project. Also, roughly around $6 million of avoided investment in new assets that could have been needed as a result of flood damage. What is being attempted here is in between these wind turbines to regrow a forest that is of vital importance to our ecology and to the future of climate change for Pakistan. Pakistan is incredibly vulnerable to the effects of climate change. The heat levels in Jacobabad are already the highest in the world. The water scarcity, the rising temperatures, the increasing salinity of our groundwater, the lack of water in our rivers, the melting of the glaciers are going to have profound impacts. From a global warming and climate change viewpoint, our delta requires as much reforestation as possible. The Avacina mangrove 
has aerial roots. If you look around at the site, you will see little finger-like protrusions out of the soil. Those are not growing the shoots of the plant. Those are the breathing aerial roots. So this tree breathes through its leaves, yes, but also breathes through its little protrusions. So the tree absorbs the carbon dioxide. It converts it into nutrients, forms of sugar, and uh, feeds its roots. Pakistan has set out some quite ambitious commitments that will help protect it from the impacts of climate, particularly through nature-based solutions. All of these can actually help to increase the resiliency of Pakistan. Our site is an active fishing ground for the local community. We have two, three hundred fishermen visiting the site every day. We have people catching crabs, we have people catching shrimp. The existing procedures we've put in place have already had a direct impact where two years ago, fishermen might have been catching five kilos of jinga, of shrimp. Now they're catching 10 kilos. It's a symbiotic relationship that's critical for us to maintain this historical fishing ground for the communities, whilst also training the locals to protect the environment they have. The philosophies at Zephyr are really influenced by our stakeholders and by management. BII is our largest equity shareholder. They own just under 50% of uh, Zephyr Power. As the UK's Development Finance Institute, we are 100% owned by the UK government and we're also an impact investor. We're very much focused on trying to invest in a way that will reduce poverty, deliver on the sustainable development goals, and really ensure that all countries are moving towards a path towards sustainable development. Zephyr really represents a mix of good technology, good environmental governance, good community relationships and governance, and individual ownership from the people that are here and from our stakeholders of the long-term strategy. Pakistan and Pakistanis are probably leading the projects of mangrove restoration throughout the world. We have to work with humans and nature. It is a joint existence, and that's the only way forward.